This video is about obesity and a simple cure, but I would urge almost everyone to watch it because just as obesity relates to practically every other facet of health, the information in this video can help almost anybody, even if you don't necessarily have an issue with obesity. There's an incredible amount of misinformation out there about obesity. You constantly hear in the media that uh, obesity is related to genetics. Of course, anything is related to genetics, but you can travel around the world and see people with the same genetics as Americans, and they're not obese the way we are. You also hear that uh, people just need to exercise more, that that's the issue. And again, in other countries around the world, not necessarily everyone is exercising or, or getting hardly any exercise at all in some cases, but again, they're rarely obese. In fact, you can see thousands of people living in other countries with all sorts of genetics and all sorts of different exercise regimes, and you will never see anyone morbidly obese as long as they're eating a natural diet. That's the problem with obesity in America, and it's easy to cure. Unfortunately, almost no one does it because our diet in America is so incredibly unnatural that almost no one returns to a real natural diet. So first, let me go over some of the potential causes of this epidemic of obesity that we have. And these are things that almost no one escapes because they're so ubiquitous in our diet. The first is unnatural fats. No one around the world and no one in history ate the types of fat that we eat. We eat a lot of liquid fat and types of liquid fat that were unknown in most cases even a hundred years ago. Canola oil was unknown practically before World War II. Um, soybean oil, corn oil, and frying everything in these unnatural oils, nobody around the world does that even today. That's not a traditional natural way of eating. Um, when you fry an oil, you oxidize the oil and it's extremely unhealthy. And there's also no way of knowing whether these different types of oil that humans have never really eaten in any quantities, what the effects of those are going to be on the body. And nobody's ever done any long-term studies on that and probably no one ever will. Worst of all is hydrogenated oil, which is in practically any processed food. Um, causes a lot of oxidative stress to the body, and it's also a totally unnatural type of molecule that we never evolved to process. And it's been linked in studies to obesity in laboratory animals, and it's also been linked, in my understanding, to hardening of the arteries and other issues, but it really hasn't been studied properly. So in traditional societies, First of all, people don't fry anything, or hardly ever fry. If they do, it's you know very briefly to saute something, and a lot of times they'll put in some water also so that the oil never gets up to a high temperature. And the only two traditional oils that I know of that are used to any extent are uh, tropical oils like palm oil or coconut oil, which are cold pressed, not heated during the extraction process and then there's extra virgin olive oil. There are plenty of native societies that eat a lot of fat without becoming overweight, but they're eating totally different types of fat. Things like fresh nuts, which are lightly roasted or raw. Um, things like dairy, which haven't been homogenized, haven't been pasteurized, and are organic, not uh, conventional dairy products, or organic meats. So the fats we eat in almost all cases are completely unnatural types prepared in completely unnatural ways. Next is the carbohydrates, and again, completely unnatural. Most of our carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates, are things like sugar and high fructose corn syrup. I can't even go into the whole host of problems caused by those unnatural sweeteners, but two of the main issues are that they have no enzymes and no fiber, whereas almost all natural sweeteners that I know of have a high degree of fiber and are very high in enzymes, as well as being high in antioxidants. Things like raw honey or dried fruit, you know, raisins or dates, that have been sun-dried, not oven-dried the way we do in modern society, those are all high in enzymes and high in fiber, and this puts less of a load on your pancreas, and almost certainly would cut down on the epidemic of, of diabetes that we have along with our epidemic of obesity. Even the complex carbohydrates that we eat are fairly different from what people have in other countries. Uh, our white flour tends to be overprocessed and very low in nutrients for a number of reasons. 
So we've gone over carbohydrates and fats. It shouldn't be any surprise that the proteins we eat are often very unnatural as well. But this time the effect is relatively unstudied and much more subtle and unknown. You see, we feed a lot of substances to animals which cause those animals to quickly gain weight before they're slaughtered and increase the profit margin. Things like urea, which is a toxin and causes the animal to bloat up quickly, or hormones or antibiotics, which have an unknown linkage, but they're proven to cause the animal to gain a lot of weight. The thing we never think about, though, is that we then eat the meat from these animals and we ingest these same substances. And no one has ever studied whether or not that causes humans to gain weight as well. But if these substances are causing all of the different animal species to gain weight, and then we're eating the meat that contains those substances, it's certainly a possibility that it's going to have an effect on us as well. I wouldn't wait for the Beef or Dairy Council to fund a study on that issue, though. You see, everything that we hear in the media about diet, and particularly about obesity, is being pushed by someone trying to make money. People saying that you need this particular piece of exercise equipment, or you need to eat that particular type of food. It's all just being pushed by different industry groups, and most of the things being pushed aren't natural. You don't need to listen to all the media noise, and you don't even need to listen to the general consensus, because nowadays the general consensus has been so poisoned by these promotions and these media campaigns that are backed by millions of dollars. All you need to do is listen to the traditional knowledge of millions of people who have developed specific diets over the course of thousands of years. We've just thrown all of that knowledge away and we're relying on a few biased studies to tell us what's healthy. The problem is no one is eating what's healthy anymore. No one is eating natural food anymore. And everyone is running around confused by all these little studies that are being put out by industry saying this or that thing is healthy or is unhealthy. Just follow traditional diets. In particular, follow the traditional diet of your ethnic group. Because yes, there is genetic variability. Some people do have a greater tendency towards obesity. And the traditional diets of those people are different. I know it's not easy to learn about and prepare traditional food all the time. It would be a lot nicer if what industry told us was true, that you could just eat this or that healthy food once in a while and it would counterbalance a, a normally unhealthy diet, but it just doesn't work that way. Um, and it's not that incredibly difficult to prepare traditional foods. There are a few basic rules like eating organic food, eating fresh heirloom varieties of food, the fruit that you get from the supermarket doesn't taste like the fruit you get from the farmer's market, and there's a reason for that. It's because it doesn't have the same nutrients and antioxidants in it. There are a lot of good resources for information. You know, my favorite is the Weston Price Foundation, and there are a lot of good YouTube channels even. There's Underground Wellness, there's Psyche Truth, there's a lot of videos on health. You can look at my video, Traditional Foods, which talks about some of the basic traditional staples around the world. And it is a long learning process, but it's really one of the most important things you may ever do. In addition to curing the obesity problem, you know, it relates to this epidemic of so many other health diseases that we have in America. And what most people recognize least of all is that it also relates to your nervous system health and to the mental health of individuals and society. Disraeli once said that the most important goal of any statesman should be to improve the health of the populace because the health of the populace is the health of the state. And what you see in America for the last 10 or 20 years is a reflection of the food we eat in, in every respect, I believe.